I'd love to get your opinion on why are there so many different theories of everything? I mean, there's Wolfram has one. Our mutual friend Eric Weinstein has had one. Uh, Garrett Lisi. I mean, they seem to proliferate. And these are very, very, you know, legitimate uh, ideas, some of which are, are very creative. Stephen Wolfram has a completely uh, different approach from the geometric uh, approaches of people like Lisi and Weinstein. Uh, what do you attribute, first of all, the the upsurgence in interest in new and theories of everything? It's a natural frontier, and uh, people have uh, different ideas for how things should go. Some some ideas are more developed than others, uh, and uh, and have had. Uh, I mean, yeah, like of course, the final arbiter of any idea is. Uh, to make a definite uh, experimental prediction that you know you could be falsified, and, or basically a prediction that you could go and check that this theory uh, has. And there, there have been no predictions like this for from any of the theories. Um, but uh, along the way, some some theories have had more uh, predict, or let's say mathematical predictions, or predictions for other areas of physics, or some interest, more interesting structure. Um, and some are consistent with the, these principles of the 20th century physics that I discussed, and some are not. So, um, for example, it's not clear whether Wolfram's uh, ideas are consistent with the principles of, of relativity and causality and so on. Uh, time doesn't, it's not. Uh, and, uh, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, I think uh, the for those of us that uh, work on uh, string inspired ideas. The, what we like is that uh, it's a theory with well-defined rules and, you, well, at least in some regimes uh, where you can do calculations and it's compatible with these general principles of uh, 20th century physics. Mm -hmm. And when we look at uh, some of the questions that are coming up about connections between quantum field theory, one of my listeners uh, whose name is Rust in Peace, who is a frequent contributor on the channel, he's asking, uh, whether or not the black hole information paradox shows that quantum field theory is incomplete. In other words, do we need a fundamentally new theory uh, to merge quantum mechanics and GR as illustrated by the black hole paradox? Yes, I think, I think, I think that's right. Um, but it's incomplete when, when gravity is dynamical. So when the effects of, uh, when the effects of the finiteness of the Newton constant is, is, imp is important. So. Mm -hmm. And then, yes. Uh, others are asking about, you know, the perceived, I get this a lot, you know, failure of string theory to, you know, come up with this. But I think I think you've already sort of addressed this, that uh, it may be sort of uh, too much to ask for or maybe not phrasing the meaning of the word theory of everything. And, and maybe there's too much expectation of things like uh, string theory. So what's your current appraisal of the of the state of affairs in string theory, for example? Well, I think uh, string theory, I view it mainly as a candidate theory for quantum gravity. And uh, it's a theory that's been fairly developed and has a very interesting mathematical structure and has led to um, interesting connections between quantum field theory and gravity or between different quantum field theories and quantum field theory and condensed matter and uh, quantum mechanics and thinking about yeah quantum mechanics and space time in general and if um, but yeah the fact that there isn't a concrete experimental prediction is a problem and uh, I think uh, we we understood that the landscape of possible that, that there was a roadmap for ex experimental predictions in the late 80s which was well we'll we'll have we have this very nice 10 dimensional theory and we'll find the internal space on which uh, it's compactified so, so six dimensions are small we'll find the possible shapes there will be a finite small number of possible shapes we'll uh, we'll find which is the one that gives the standard model and we'll be able to calculate things that that was the roadmap um, that roadmap turned out to be, uh, well, it was more complicated than expected because there were many, many possible shapes and many, the, the, the number was so big that, uh, it, it's very difficult to study them, them all or study them in a, in a way that you could really make a concrete prediction. The, the current thinking is that, uh, the, just in, in to, to explain or accommodate the cosmological constant, you need to, to, uh, to exploit this complexity and 
and so so it, the, the typical like the typical so if you take an off the shelf uh, internal space uh, you will get the cosmological constant which is too large so the idea that the current idea well among all the one there are so many that one will have the right cosmological constant but that also makes it very difficult to make a concrete prediction prediction but i mean people are some people are are, are still um, well they, they definitely many people are trying to make statistical predictions so maybe you don't know exactly which of the vacuum where we live in or which but making perhaps statistical uh, predictions of what that landscape it's sometimes called the string landscape of what that landscape looks like i personally think that also this uh, connection between gravity and and quantum mechanics maybe can lead to a different kind of prediction a different kind of uh, connection between the idea, these ideas and and the rest of physics uh, and, and concrete physics uh, which is via perhaps quantum computers and maybe uh, quantum experiments in the lab of building something some systems some complex the ideas that very complex uh, systems uh, behave uh, in a way that can be described by a certain space-time and it's not our four-dimensional space-time but maybe some auxiliary two-dimensional space-time and so on and there are people thinking more actively about uh, how to get these ideas to, to work. Um.